Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kirby. This is Curbside Weekly, uh, a weekly vlog of me just doing bits and bobs and bringing you along for the ride. And we are back on this Monday morning on this Audi TT. I've already been out this morning and replaced the battery on a customer's car. He spends a lot of his time in Dubai, so quickly just popped around, put a new battery on that car for him. And then we're back here, as you saw to the end of last week, I fitted some coil packs and a thermostat and some spark plugs to this Audi TT. I was meant to get a mass airflow sensor from GSF. Um, they ordered it in, but it didn't come in. Then it was meant to come in in the afternoon. But anyway, I'm back, gonna swap that out. Um, we're also gonna run this car up to temperature, which I didn't do after replacing the thermostat. And then we're gonna take it for a little test drive um because he's got a bit of a knocking noise so yeah let's get to it cool look how crusty this screw is someone's already cut a tab in it this one's already loose so we've got a lovely little bosch unit take that out Right, didn't have to go far to hear this knock. Well, I haven't even driven it. I'll just... I think it might be that lower arm. Right, so I've checked everything and the only issue I can find is this bush just looks absolutely knackered. So, um, and there's no play in anything else. So, um, yeah, we're gonna take it for a quick test drive. Um, just make sure the noise is coming from this area. And uh, yeah, I'll suggest two new lower arms. Right, next up is my new van. Well, it's gonna be a second van anyway. So I'm buying this Vito off my brother-in-law. Um, but it's just been sat around for a little while now. And as you saw, the battery is flat. Now the father-in-law couldn't get this started the other day, so he did charge it up, but he said it was just clicking. Uh, key, key, key. I think the battery, the main battery is under here. Right, I've had to get the jump pack on here. So the battery only comes out to there. And trying to get the positive cable just in that little gap there. A little bit sketchy. All right, let's see if it starts up. No, still no start. Right, let's see if this works. Up there. Let's connect this back up. And fire in the hole. Hey. Right, so we've got it started. And he needs to clean it out first before I can take it. But uh, we've got a warning light for the tires, which I'm just pumping up now. And then we've got an auxiliary battery malfunction. And also the power steering doesn't work. Um, so yeah, we've got to figure out that when I get it home. Um, but yeah, it's a nice spec, this one. Auto, um, it's got the reversing camera. Um, it's quite a good spec, like I said, it's a um, decent little van. So I'm actually looking for somebody else to possibly go out in this van or go out in my van. Because um, I'm so busy, well, usually busy. Last week or the week before I wasn't busy, but generally speaking, I'm busy enough that I need to get a second person out because I miss out on so many jobs where I'm booked up and someone calls up and they need something easy doing. just same day next day so i would probably have this van 
go and do all the last minute sort of jobs uh, but yeah be a nice little service van I think this one welcome back guys it's Tuesday and the weather is taking a bit of a turn it's a bit wet um, but we've got this Hyundai i30 up on the ramps um, in for a service so I've already dropped the oil out um, they wanted spark plugs doing at the same time as well um, it's actually got quite a heavy oil leak around the back which I'll show you now and the oil is actually coming from the cam cover gasket which I'll come back at another time to replace anyone would have thought it's uh, four o'clock on a winter's afternoon with how dull it is today So here we've got the Denso spark plugs and they are Iridium. Right, as always, the new spark plugs are in and took them up. So the first stage is 20 newton meters. 20. 20. 20. And then a further 10 to make it 30. Right, we're using Castrol for this. And to be honest, I don't usually use Castrol oil because the bottles come in four liters instead of five like the rest of them. And that's just annoying because a lot of cars take more than four liters. So it ends up being a bit more expensive. Right, so I noticed um, when I moved this car in the space, there was a, um, definitely a bit of notchiness coming from the steering and also when you use these ramps you can't check things like track rod ends and your wheel bearings so I've just got the jack under there on the subframe with a block of wood right. no play that side Nothing that side. Hmm. Right, and last things last. I know Mrs. Kirby doesn't like me saying last things last because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, it does to me. Well, you're wrong. But anyway, last things last. <laughs> the curbside air freshener. Uh, if any any of you guys want one, give me a shout, let me know in the comments or send me a message. Pretty cool, I think. Right, so I'm on my next job. It's raining, so um, I've just got to this stage here. We've got all of these front bumpers off, the front slam panel, um, just to get to this radiator. Um, so the gentleman last night, he called up and he broke down in these services here, Beckenfield services, um, and he was going to Lincoln, so... Um, the radiator wasn't available um, yeah just had to get it ordered up for the morning but yeah it's just been raining the whole time I've had someone help me along as well um, so yeah it's just all going back together now a few pipes to go on um, a few connectors and then we'll be finished with this one right that Renault Masters all done <laughs> so I was gonna do a little how-to video on that one but as I started there's this gentleman that is uh, staying in a caravan at the services and uh, he just happened to have a little wander over and I thought he'd be there five minutes, have a quick chat, see what I'm getting up to. But he ended up <laughs> staying for the whole job and helping me out. So uh, yeah, I didn't really film, well obviously as you can see. Yeah, he just ended up staying for the whole thing, having a chat hold one part for me while I lift another bit up which was great but yeah um, and the rain and everything it just didn't make for filming and you're only allowed three hours in this services so I just wanted to be quick right next job or oh, last job of the day little Honda Jazz 
Um, and this is the second job of the day where the AA have been out first. So we've just got a seized caliper and it's ground down the pads. And as you can see, this redness, as I keep saying, is a sign that the disc has been getting very hot. So let's get this caliper off. Ah, before I start, I'm just going to get these locating screws out because they're quite tight. So I've got this impact driver. What you do is put it in there, twist it this way. Tap it, forces it that way, twists it that way. And that way you save damaging the heads on these screws. I'll take them off. And of course it starts raining as soon as I start this job. Right, yet another job where the customer came out just as I was filming and he stayed there for the whole job. It's now six o'clock, just got home. Because I did do a bit of traveling today. Um, yeah, I did do a bit of traveling, but uh, yeah, it's a good day. Sorry I couldn't show you more. Um, yeah, it's just the way things pan out and whatever. But um, we've got more for you this week. So yeah, see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Wednesday. And the sun is shining. Um, just up the unit as you can see I'm um, just waiting for a customer to turn up so I've done the drive belt and the pulleys on the Safira a couple of weeks ago I think the next day same day he said the belt was squeaking because we had if you haven't seen the video we put I think three belts on two two different belts they kept on sending in the wrong size and um, eventually got one that fitted it was fine it was running no problems at all uh, but he said the belt's squeaking so um, gonna have a quick look at that so just waiting for him to turn up um, we'll do a little update of what we've got in stock at the minute for the car sales sort of thing we've got the van transit custom 2.2 we traded it in for the other transit custom we had in a two litre wet belt one that had, engine had gone so the guy a friend of ours he, he likes a bit of a project he um he's recently put an engine in this one so we've done a little deal so we've got that we have got this ford cougar so that's up for sale at the minute the mighty sl350 That just needs a pickup ring on the drive shaft and that's ready to go to paint. That needs a bit of paint. And as you know, my X5, the V8 petrol, the Chevrolet, and the Mark II. Every time I see it, I'm like, I have to get something started on this. I just need a bit of time with it. And I know there's some body panels I'm gonna need, so I'm gonna have to go on um, VW Heritage and see what's available. Um, yeah, um, we've got this little Citroen C4. Nice cheap little Ulez. Uh, got my old Transit Custom. This needs a timing chain. It was a good little van, this. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got no battery power in this. I do miss this van. And to be honest, if it had aircon, I probably wouldn't have moved out of it. So yeah, that's all we've got in at the minute, I think. The rest of these are Carl's cars, or some of them are Jason, who works with us. I think Cole might be selling his A6, if anybody's interested. Alright, well, that was a waste of time. 
customer comes up and uh, first thing he says, ah, oh, it's not making a sound anymore. He's driven it around today and it's no longer squeaking. There's not much I can do from there. You can't fix something that's not broken. All right, we're back at this uh, crafter for the seatbelt you would have seen in a few videos ago. Um, so we've got a fault with this um, tensioner or pre-tensioner on this seatbelt. I'm going to try and take this panel off and see if we can get to it. Um, we've got the brand new second hand one here. Um, I want to try and avoid taking this whole seat frame out. Um, I mean, it's only one, two bolts, three bolts, maybe, and then it should all lift out. So it might not be too bad, but I'm going to try and get in here first. Right, I've managed to do, just swing this trim out of the way so we will be able to get to it. Hello. I'm pretty glad there's a uh, cage in the way. But anyway, a couple of bolts up here. Under there. Bolt down there little plug and it just bolts into here all right it's all back together I'm just gonna get a little launch computer on there see if we can clear the code this time and it stays off like I said it has had wiring repairs down here previously which I've checked and um, all the connections are good so I don't think it's that. Right, so the second fault we've got in this van, we've got the pressure tester out. That's been on there about 10, 15 minutes now. Not lost any pressure. He's having to top up a few litres of water. Um, you know, by the time he gets 10 minutes down the road, but I've done a block test on this, that's past that. It's not leaking any coolant anywhere. I'm at a loss. Don't really know. So I'm just going to have a look underneath anywhere else. Run it up. See if I can see it actually leaking under pressure. But doesn't seem to be. Right. Just on this, my next job, which is a oil filter housing gasket. Um, so as you can see from underneath it is leaking pretty heavily um, so there's a lot up here we've got to take off I believe we've got to take part of the exhaust off yeah so let's get into it So this, uh, I'm not quite sure what pipe this is, but um, there was a screw in there, so it went in that way in the car, and there was a coolant pipe just running over that, so I just had to get a screw out there. All right, we're just going to get all the coolant out now, so just going to uh, take off one of these pipes, let it all drain out. All right, that's the coolant out. Um, a few plugs down here. I think the next thing to tackle is getting the downpipe off. So we've got a few bolts here. Got to get the uh, that over the lambda, lambda sensor. There's a few bolts down there that look like they're probably going to rust off and snap. But let's go. So that's the cover off. Sits in there like that. You've got one bolt there, one bolt there, one bolt round the side three up the top and then you can just get the lambda sensor through that hole right so you can take underneath here there's a nut there nut there that'll free up the exhaust um, I did have to loosen this uh, lower heat shield uh, so some ten, two 10 mils up that way same on the other side, just to get out of the way. Um, I might have not even needed to loosen that, I don't know, because I did get these just above it. 
nuts off. Um, I've got the bolt out for this and I'll show you a little trick to get these types of clamps out. If you've got two lever bars, uh, the car is not quite high enough, but you put them together like this in there and then you lever against one another. Let's see if we can do it, even though this one's a bit long. Actually, let's get a shorter one. There we go. Right, it's still a little bit long, but it should do the job. So they're both in there. Like that. Just like that. Right, I am kind of stuck because there's this little cross brace here. Goes up to a 10 mil bolt. Just up there. And that bolt is seized in there. <sighs> and access isn't the best either. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. Because I believe, well, I'm, I know I need that plate off and that bar. And then we're almost there, to be honest. Hmm. Ah, nothing a bit of heat can't sort out. We've got it loose enough just to get that bar away. Whew. But that was stiff, very stiff. Can crack on now. Right, we have now got access to the whole cooler and oil filter housing. We are just about out. And there we go. So this seal is, uh, it's not quite hard enough at the point where it's just snapping, but it's quite, quite firm and it's not very supple. Um, this one as well for the coolant that one's not too bad but yeah that one's you obviously you can't feel it but um, yeah it's quite firm where it should be you know everybody knows what rubber feels like so yeah there we go just got to clean it all so up so we've got genuine BMW seals about 50 odd quid for 50 quid for that Eesh. but yeah um, not too bad of a job that's the first one I've done uh, and it's just about making your life easier what needs to come off what is in your way getting to what you need to get to if you just take things off one by one methodically um, you can't go too far wrong um, you know you just got to give these things a go um, obviously so my background is I've done my apprenticeship with Volkswagen, worked for them for years, then went to go work for the AA, which you don't really get too involved in too much work, to be honest. Batteries, flat tires, towing. That's your main main job. You fix the odd thing here, start a motor, alternator, but you don't get too involved in most cars. So there's a lot of jobs on a lot of cars I haven't done before that might be common jobs but it's the first time i've needed to come across a job like this so um yeah it was not too bad anyway um but yeah i'm just gonna put it all back together drop the oil out and put fresh oil and a fresh filter in it and uh, we'll be done the time is now five o'clock or five to five so it's gonna be a late one <sighs> the joys of being self-employed right that is everything back together just gonna fill it with oil right well she's running
Well, I'm just gonna let that run up now. Um, no leaks initially, um, which is good. It's now 25 past seven. Um, but we got it done, a little bit slow on this one. Um, what's that, five hours I think it's taken me? I think book time's maybe three, three and a half. Um, but yeah, it's, like I said, first one doing it. I haven't charged the customer um, time taken. It's book time. So yeah, it's been a good little job. So I've chucked everything in the van or just in the tow tray. Got to have a bit of a tidy up. I'll do that tomorrow morning because I just want to get home. Right, and that's it. Um, yeah. We will see you on tomorrow's jobs. I got home and my customer has uh, knocked on my door and said, uh, there's something leaking from your back doors. Yep, there's definitely oil leaking from my back doors. Ah, oh dear. I think we'll just leave that like that overnight and then it'll be tomorrow's problem. Good morning everyone, it's Thursday and it's the morning after the night before. So I left all these granules down to soak up overnight so just got to get cleaning it up and get to work. It's fun. Well, I've cleaned up the majority of the granules. Um, still loads left in crevices and whatnot. I'm gonna have to um, on the weekend have a proper clear out because I've got to just put my tools away from yesterday because they all went in the tote tray and uh, yeah on the weekend give it a good old going over but to be honest I don't really like the layout in here um, so all these shelves they're absolutely solid good shelves very good shelves but for what I need they're too narrow if you're wondering how the hell did you spill any oil um, so I use this 20 litre drum and it has this little breather screw on bit so when you're pouring it doesn't glug I left that open because a lot of these don't have it so I've just forgotten about that and that must have been put down somewhere in the van where it wasn't totally flat and it's just rolled over now luckily because it wasn't completely rolled over it didn't lose all its oil and there was a lot of oil out of that drum already used so yeah um i'd like to say this is the first time this has happened and i'd like to also say this is the second time it's happened but this is the third time it's happened so yeah but yeah i wasn't i was tired like i said got home late long day um and mistakes happen but uh we deal with it clean it up and go again um, so yeah, we'll see you at the first job. Nice easy day today, luckily. Right, up next we've got this Toyota Urban Cruiser, just for a service. So we're just dropping the oil, and then the oil filter is up here. And on these, or a lot of these Toyotas, or Asian branded cars, they have this under tray, like a lot of cars, but They've got the cutouts where you need to drain the oil and uh, the oil filter, which uh, is very handy and very thoughtful, to be fair. Right, so uh, a quick top tip whilst I'm waiting for that to drain is uh, if you undo the sump plug, make sure you always do the oil filter as well um, because there will be oil stored in the oil filter or the oil filter housing that will then run down into the sump so if you take the sump off first and then put the plug back in and then take the oil filter out you're going to have a load of old oil 
go back into the bottom of the sump so usually most of the time I will, will do the oil filter first or if my drain pan can cover both I'll do both And then just to add to that tip, if you want uh, the oil to flow more, just loosen up the oil cap or the dipstick and it just uh, lets air in and pushes it all out. Right, next up is just another plain old boring service on this Ford Transit Custom. Um, I won't really film it, don't need to film it. Van's done 20,000 miles, I think, 25,000 miles. So yeah, just gonna get this done and uh, go up the unit. Right, so uh, I did go up the unit, but um, Carl from uh, Logi Carl, the other mobile mechanic up uh, by the units, he was there, we got chatting, and then I just lost interest, so <laughs> I'm going home again. Um, but yeah, um, Carl, 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 Carl will be, um, starting a YouTube channel or he has started a YouTube channel so I'll get his link to his um, channel he gets involved in some right uh, you know big jobs so if you like the stuff I do if you like the stuff marvelous does and Baz you'll definitely like his channel so um, yeah and I'm gonna get him out with uh, me for a day one day and you know um, so yeah he, he, you guys would be great just to subscribe to him a new channel getting motivated to keep on making videos um, but anyway that's me done for the day and I'll see you tomorrow right it's Friday and it's a bit of a late start today um, because I've got two customers that aren't available till late in the afternoon and for some reason I just I just didn't book anything in in the morning I don't know I looked at the diary yesterday I was like I haven't booked anything in. Why have I done that? So I did uh, message a customer who needs a service on his van. Two year old Citroen relay van. So it needs Citroen parts for a warranty. Rang them up and they don't sell oil off the shelf for it. They only get it in their big containers or whatever. So I'm a bit stuck with servicing his car under warranty specs. I mean, I can get the same spec oil, the correct grade, everything, but for warranty, they will probably need Citroen oil. So I've come up the unit to do a bit of work on this Mercedes SL that you've all seen. Um, I'll post up a little clip here. I went for a little drive in it after doing the battery, the misfire, a um, couple of other bits and bobs. And the ABS light come on. It sounds like the pickup ring on the uh, drive shaft is uh, damaged. So we're going to get stuck into that. Right. So I'm at this stage. I've taken a few of the arms out just to lever this whole hub down. Um, but this drive shaft is not coming out. Um, tried a bit of heat on it. Got the hammer on it. Um, but it's not budging. It's quite corroded in there. So next option would be to possibly take the whole complete hub assembly out and push it out. Or I'm going to go and try and borrow an air hammer um, from someone down the road, see if he's got one. If he's in, he's not always there, so yeah. Well, that was a bit of a fail. The other guy wasn't in his garage. And I tried heating up that hub a bit to try and get the drive shaft out, but weren't having it so got to come up with another plan but for now I've got two more jobs to go do we'll see you there right here we are on the next job where it's in for a broken sliding handle which I've previously replaced not that long ago um, and it's snapped in the exact same place as the last one so I'm not quite sure if that's just some cheap eBay Part because that's where we got that one from um, and then we've got front brakes making a bit of a noise and I don't know if you're gonna pick it up on camera 
but you can see a lot of these heat spots where it's been getting very hot and the disc is very uneven um, but this outer pad if we can get some light on there is pretty much non-existent um, uh, but the inner pad has got material left um, and I've done front pads and discs on this maybe a year and a half ago um, so there's something got to be seized up so I'm gonna take this caliper off and see what we can find so I think we found our problem this slider seems to be seized by the looks of it not too bad actually okay whilst it doesn't move very freely they still both move not seized so let's try and push these back right these pads are Borgenbeck I don't use Borgenbeck pads I think these have done been done before he must have got them done somewhere else because I remember him calling me up about a brake noise but I couldn't get to him anyway all right so I've cleaned up these sliders and I can just push that in and out with my hand nice and easy now um, the actual calipers they're going back absolutely fine if I can show you so I'll just get the old pad open up these Squeeze those in. Go. They've gone in nice and easy. Good old Euro car parts strikes again. Have to look at that disc. And have a look at that one. Oh, wrong discs. God's sake. Oh well, looks like he's not having discs. Right, so yesterday, where did I finish? Ah, yes. Um, the handle on the craft that I was doing I left it at home and uh, yeah so it's a genuine Mercedes part we've got this time and I just left it at home so this is the next day in case you're wondering how it's on my van and um, whatever um, then I went round quickly to another customer's house literally just to confirm that his window regulator was broke on his Mark IV Golf and that's it and I'm actually working a Saturday for a change um, and we've got a clutch and flywheel on this uh, crafter uh, and this crafter I've done about four starter motors on so today we're finally going to get to the bottom of why those starter motors keep going but you won't see that in this video but you'll see this in a separate video um, I will leave the link up here to this video um, so we're going to do the clutch and flywheel and the cam cover gasket but, and that's it for this week of Curbside Weekly. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe. Um, hopefully by the time this video goes out, I'll be on 10,000 subscribers. So if I am, thank you very much. Um, and I wanna try and get to 15,000 by Christmas. Big ask. We're now the 10th of August as I film this, so I've got a few months. So if you've watched a video or even two videos of mine and not subscribed, just hit that button. Help me along the way. See you in the next one.